Hello and welcome to the Race Grooves Weekend Show. If you're one of the 2,487 new subscribers to the channel this week, welcome. Thank you for popping in. Uh, also, for those of you who subscribe to my new channel, uh, thank you very much. It's going to be a little while before I get that channel launched, uh, but I got to start somewhere. So right now I just have temporary things. I'm having artwork done. I got to get a new banner, new, new. I'm even going to have Race Grooves refurbished, get it. I took my logo, put it on some blue, and that's, that's my banner. That's all I've been using. So uh, I don't think it's necessarily, I've done okay with my channel. Uh, you know, the artwork isn't exactly, it's important, but it's not like the make all, break all thing for your channel. It's about the content, right? The content. That being said, there'll be some uh, updates to the channel, hopefully mm, within a few weeks or so. Hey, you know what? Recently, I, I filmed a truck fire on the 63 over there by uh, Montebello, and I had put that video on my channel. Well, guess what? Uh... I got this comment during the week. Araceli Rodriguez. Araceli Rodriguez. Can't roll my R's. I try. It doesn't work. Sorry. When your dad comes home and tells you about his day and somebody posts it on YouTube. Well, it seems like that was her dad that was in that truck fire. Well, he wasn't in the truck fire. That's his truck. Okay. Because um, I replied to her and said, you know, hey, you know, my viewers want to know if your, your dad's okay. And... She went and she replied to some people and she said, yeah, her father is fine. Glad to hear that her father's fine. And some people might wonder, is that true? Is that really? I don't know. But look, I'm going to give the person the benefit of the doubt. I think she's the daughter of the truck driver uh, that was there. I, I don't know. I'm glad that she appears to be okay. She found the video. And I'm definitely glad that her, we don't want nobody to get hurt in a truck fire. But I, if he can reach out, I'd like to talk with him. Who knows? I'm sure my viewers would like to know what happened. First-hand experience. You were there. Let's go ahead. Uh, oh, another thing i got to thank people for. Thank you for uh, checking out my Patreon account. Uh, we got 12 people, up to 12 people now, pitching in a little bit. Look, even a dollar helps this channel because I pay for everything, right? I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not sponsored on this channel. I have done some sponsored videos, but look, all this stuff, I pay for all this content. Let's go ahead and feature some of your comments from the week, starting with Truck and Tuesday. I reviewed a Tonka flatbed crate truck, and Simon Sally said the middle trailer, the middle of trailer, appears to have some support legs folded, but do they unfold? Let me check it out. Yeah, look right there. I didn't even notice it. That's your trailer support legs. This way you can drop off your trailer, or in this case, it's a, a flatbed trailer. Then you can drive away, go do another job. Maybe later on, come back, pick up the trailer. You're ready to go. Giggle Blaggle. All you're missing is a Crash Bandicoot figure to destroy the crates. Ha ha. Well, I got the figures. We'll check them out later in the show. I did a 2017K USA Hot Wheels case unboxing video. And Zoom Zoom Toys. I can't recall, but is this the first super of the year during an unboxing video? Not only is it the first super that I pulled from a case this year, it's the first 2017 super that I pulled. And that's when my last super was, 2016 in. I got a Super 4 GT in my USA case. And I also got one in my worldwide case unboxing video. You can check out both of those unboxings in the description. Also in the case was Surf and Turf. It's a 2017 new model. And I noticed that one of my two had a window flashing error. Here's a close-up. You can see how some of the metal is still in the window. The King Racer 007 noticed another error at 512. Thank you very much for the time marker. The Chevy El Camino has an error in regards to the base. Good eye. He's correct. If you notice, when they put the model together, for some reason the spun post was a little out of line or... When they went to put the assemble the model, something happened and the base shifted. Check it out. It, it's definitely wonkers. I did an Auto World unboxing video. It was the 2017 release one. And Tom McAdams said, with all the cars out there, these guys keep releasing the same ones. Well, actually, it was the C and D assortment. So, yeah, you've seen A and B before. But there is kind of like the same feeling the same cars are being released throughout the year. Cancel Meto. Hi, Race Crews. Good video as always. At 122, the Dodge is missing the rear hub. Is that normal? 
And this was explained to me before. You know what? This car was often used for drag racing. So yeah, why put a hubcap on the back if you're going to use the car for drag racing? Let me share a little bit of hunting videos this week. I went to Five Below and they had some nice cars. Yes, they're older. I have enough. I let them all go. Not only that, I even let these two go. Yeah, treasure hunts. I let them go. I got, I got enough of those. I'll leave them for somebody else. Here is a USA Walmart store. No new Hot Wheels. No new Marvel, no new Monster Jam, no new Silver, nothing. I got all that stuff. So it's, it's kind of a nothing happening. Even over on the Disney cars, you know what? Same cars being released. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's the same cars that were released at the launch. However, check out these new M2. This is the Auto Driver series. Very nice. Flat black looking good. This Mustang is going to be hard to resist. You can read the names of the other models. I told you I wasn't going to be able to resist that 1970 Ford Mustang Mach 1. I also picked up the 1950 Studebaker truck. Those are nice die casts with lots of pieces. That's something to consider when you're collecting your die cast. Well, as opposed to the car culture race day models, of course, if you'd like to collect Hot Wheels, then you might like to collect this too. 78 Porsche 93578. Low and sleek. I think the wheels look great with this model. I like the colorations. Up next, let's take a look at the Mazda RX-3. This might only be the uh, no tail light decorations. Come on. This might be only the second release. I didn't look it up. I think it's the second release of the Mazda RX-3. Here you have the Porsche 914-6. I love this Porsche. Oh, no tail light decos again. Love this Porsche. Love to have it. Uh, great decorations. But you know what I really like? I love these wheels. Yeah, I like having rubber tread on my tire. I don't know if it's appropriate for this model, but I like it. Here you have the Porsche 962. It looks to have the same wheels as the other Porsche, but I, I don't know if it works on this model. Another low and sleek Le Mans type racer. And finally, this is my second pick of the batch. Well, it's a tie with the Porsche 914.6. This is my second pick of the bunch. Love those tires. Love the color presentation. No taillight decos again, but overall, just really, really like this one. Uh, like it a bunch. There you go. There's all the models from the Hot Wheels race day set. But don't forget about M2. A lot of parts. Some have opening hoods. Some have opening doors. Up next, let's check out Kmart.
But Hans Silva asked Race Grooves, can you speak of Fatbacks tuned and hard-nosed Hot Wheels cars? Well, I don't have time for the last two, but let's check out some Fastbacks. <laughs> Speaking of hard nose, Liam Casey thinks that too cool looks like evil twin. What do you think? I definitely see some similarities in the rear fender, but mm, I'm not sure. What do you guys think? The window's different in the back. They both have two engines, but evil twin has them side by side, and too cool has them in line. Earlier I mentioned a comment talking about crates. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot crates. Yeah, he had crates in the game. He would jump up and down, and that's how you would get your bonus items, like this right here. The crate's a lot bigger, though, than the ones in the trucks. Let's see what else. He's got a rocket pack. He's got his good goggles on. Hey, there's Ooga, Ooga Booga. I remember his name, as a matter of fact. Uh, the top of the package is just says Crash. All of them are the same. These are from 1998, copyright 1998. As far as all of these bios... I have uh, these two guys to show you. I have Neocortex as well. There's Coco. I have her. And here is Jetpack Crash Bandicoot. Here's a picture of both of them. This way you can pause it and read it for both of those pictures. Here's the information on the side. It looks like the backs of the packages are all the same. Let's take a look at that second pack. Careful. Oops, I got them mi mixed up. Which one did I show you? I showed you the jetpack already, right? Here's a surfboard. Wow, look at that smile. Doesn't it look fantastic? 
this item, a golden Ooga Booga. There's your fruit over there on the side. On the bottom they have these stickers. You put the stickers on the crates. If you played Crash Bandicoot, then you already know that's how the crates look. They're decorated like that. Here you have Dr. Neo Cortex. Wow, <laughs> these are these are really awesome. You know what's funny about why? I'll tell a story in just a second about why I still have these. You know, I bought these for my kids. You know, my kids were kids in the 90s. Now they're now they're both over 21. There's a look at Neo Cortex. I don't know if you can see. There you go. There's a better look at the side of that one. Um, my kids, they were young, and so I bought this for them in the 90s. Well, I had got them all the figures, but like, look how small that piece is right there. So both my kids broke the necks on, on their toys. Uh, I don't know if they... I think they might have broke a leg on one of the crash. I forget. But I took the broken parts. Oh, by the way, this is Coco Bandicoot. I took the parts, put them in a bag, and I mailed them. I mailed them to the company. It says Universal, but that's not the company who actually made the toys. Mm, Resaurus. There you go. It was by Resaurus. So I sent them the parts and said, you know, uh, I know they're not for children under three years old, but... <laughs> Both my kids, then the next just snapped, they just busted, and then I just sent them back. Well, they turned around and sent me a whole box of figures, and that's why I actually still have them in the package. Because, hey, my kids broke them the first time. You think I'm going to turn around and give them another one? I don't think so. And that's why I actually still have them in the package. Let me tell you, this guy is heavy. Tiny. Yeah, just kidding. He, this, this is a heavy figure. Really huge. It's a lot bigger package than the others. Just side by side, just for you to see. Uh, he, he's a very, I don't remember him in the game off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Of course, I remember Neo Cortex, Coco, Crash. I'm going to keep this guy in the package. As a matter of fact, uh, at this point, I happen, haven't opened him up by now. I'm not going to open him up. I checked eBay. Some of these guys are worth the money. So uh, I think I'm just going to keep him in the package. Here you have Komodo Mo. Another huge figure, really big. There's a look at there's your there's another freebie for your box. I don't know if the box opens up actually. There's Komodo Joe. Let's take a peek at the back. Yep, it's the same back as the others. Hey, wait a second. Mm hmm Who's that? Look at that. I got this one. Uh, I got an extra. Not only that. Look at this. Package all messed up. You! Look at him. He's excited. He's finally going to get to come out of the package. And I need you for my thumbnail anyways. Let's check him out. You see, look, uh, it's a little rough around the edges for this package. Let me see if there's a weak spot to open him up. A little dusty. I actually dusted him off, but I didn't see that on the side. I don't see any spots, really, any real weak spots. There's the golden Ooga Booga. It's plastic. It's kind of a, uh, wait, let's see. It's a softer plastic, but I don't want to bend it and break it. Here's a look at the uh, fruit. Now that means if, if you get a box in fruit, cargo container, this must open somehow. Well, it took me a while, but I found the side that opens up. There you go. Got a little tab. Now put your fruit in there. Now let's go ahead and get uh, the items. That scared me. Hey, look, it's got a hole. That means he can stand on it. Now I'm going to be... Oh, he's got a... Uh, I'll be back. i got to get this out. Look at him. He sees there's something still in the package. What do you want, dude? Ooh. Crystal. Now... Check out the figure. There's a copyright on his back. And you can see the groove. So yeah, he's posable to some extent. He does have some mobility. The arm is uh, softer. 20 years hasn't moved. Took a little bit of twist. There you go. Movement at the hips. 
Uh, I don't know if the legs turned. I'm going to leave that be. There you go. There's the hole for the foot stand. Put it right on there. Woohoo! You get to be in a thumbnail, dude. Okay, coming up next, ask Gray Screws. All right, I'm glad you made it to the third segment. Now, this segment here, I can't, I'm calling it my, my shotgun segment. I haven't said it out loud, but internally, it's what I call a shot, shotgun segment. Where I just kind of go through some uh, Ask Grace Ruth questions. Maybe something came up. Maybe creators have some interesting things that they should know. And I'm going to talk about that right now. And sometimes people post, I don't know if this is a troll comment. Uh, you know, I left it on the channel just in case. If somebody pops in just to start trouble, I don't need you. It's also why I delete first comments. If you put first because you want to be first. Well, guess what? It just causes trouble. I just delete it, so don't waste your time. Now, Simon P., he said that he subscribed for three years and the channel is dying. Well, I think a lot of people would still like to be in my situation. But as far as dying, well, you know, YouTube's changing, right? But, you know, I checked. You said you've been subscribed for three years. Yeah, hey, you did subscribe three years ago, but for some reason you resubscribed this month, July. So when you left, I don't know. I don't have any other comments for you in three years. I don't know where you've been. Have you been watching and not commenting? I don't know. But I took a look at your channel. Uh, 70 subs. I'm doing okay. That being said, have fun with your channel. Do what you want to do, right? Now, as far as other people, I started a new channel. And that's because of changes on YouTube. So while views are slowing down on race groups, right? You know, I'm still getting, um, I don't know, 8,000 subscribers a month, something like that. Still doing about uh, views go up and down, but I still got millions of views a month, right? But I have to change my content. I have to change what I do, right? And this new channel is one reason for that. I don't have a name there yet because I can't say it too soon. Uh, I learned that for sure. You know, I mentioned last week, Mommy and Gracie show, you know, she did the same thing. She started What the Thrift. So she started a new ad format, not ad format, a new channel format. And thanks to the five people who thumbs up her video. I was one of those five, by the way. Four other people. Thanks for the shout out. I sub so we can find out what your new channel is about. I'm sure it's going to be a success. Thank you very much, Melissa. I appreciate you uh, very much. And MTFL. Thanks, Ray Screw. Super excited for the new channel. Manny and Josh. Now, most of you know Manny and Josh. Uh, Ghost Jerker's sons. And they have a channel themselves that they've launched. And, you know, of course, Dad, Dad's there as well. So the Monster Truck Football League, same thing with him, right? Launch a new channel. Uh, on that note, you know, there's some people on YouTube, people want me to give them YouTube tips. Well, I can share a little bit here and there, but I, I can't do channel tutoring and stuff like that. But you can do some homework yourself. There's a couple channels that you, you should check out, right? Daryl Eves, and this video in particular, uh, was recent, uh, triggering the algorithm, algorithm-driven views. You know, I do an upload, and it basically gets pushed out to subscribers for 24 hours or something. And maybe you see it in your sub feed. Maybe you don't. Uh, it, it might not even show up in your recommended sidebar. And that's why 5,000, 10,000 views, you know, it's not sustainable on YouTube, right? Even though it takes me over a day to make this video, it's not sustainable on YouTube. And hence, I got to start another channel and focus on that content as well. Plus, I need to do other things on race groups, you know, admittedly. So check out Daryl Eve's video there or even check his channel he's got other things as well as tim schmoyer he's been around for many many years started up way back when i started up video creators he's got a lot of tips now i just grabbed that one video thumbnail right that video actually is i don't know a month ago or something scanned both of those fellows channels okay and they got some tips for creators let's see the race grooves weekend show uh you know what i do put i have a Instagram account as well so sometimes I post whatever pics uh, but I also put a thumbnail put something over there to let people know that I have a video up. so for last weekend's weekend show here was my post and Roar Vandness has asked about the crescendo about the splitter in the front I already covered that in the weekend show I put a link down in the description below Game Eraser 48 what conversations you go to get your what conversations i think it means conventions what where do you go to get your highway 35 i've been collecting since 1998 i bought all that stuff when it was in the stores you know almost 15 years ago now well over 10 years ago now 
I did get help though with the last remaining few because especially the, uh, the Highway 35 and accelerators, you know, Mattel bombs the stores with so much from the first and second wave that then the stores decide, well, we don't want to carry this anymore. What about wave three? What about wave four? And maybe five, I'm not sure how many waves there were. Now, some stores found them, so some people helped me get those last models, right? Um, but otherwise, um, conventions, I don't know what conventions are in your area. Nowadays, you're going to have to look for an online source, somebody reselling the cars themselves. Uh, hold on, I accidentally closed that window, and there was three, there, I know there was one more question down there. Alex Torres, one. I have a Hot Wheels Lamborghini Sesto Elemental Black and Yellow Edition. My question is, how many units have this edition? Mattel does not release production quantity, production numbers, right? We have no idea how many. But if it's a basic car, tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand of each release. Okay, it's not rare. And uh, an asked race group question on now. Here's the case unboxing video. When I do the case unboxing video, right? I put a thumbnail on Instagram. I put it on my Facebook business page, and you can post a suggestion or two in all three places. In the YouTube comments, you can post them on Instagram on this, whatever thumbnail it belongs to, right? And then on Facebook, you can post your suggestions in three places, and then you have a chance. Your chance is actually better if you post on Instagram or Facebook, because I get hundreds of comments in the YouTube video suggestions, right? Um, but I post in all three places. Now, custom by custom HW by Nando. Hey, race crews, can you talk a little more about how how super hunt, treasure hunts or treasure hunts in general work? Uh, here we go. A guy once told me it was one per area and in various locations. Too many. Any help? Look, Mattel mass produces these cars, right? Cases and cases and cases, right? And then the treasure hunts get randomly inserted into the cases. Then they get put on a pallet. And then they're shipped all over the world. Well, if they're put in a, in a case and then they get on a pallet with a bunch of other cases, it could wind up anywhere, right? So they can, there's no way to control, well, let's say, one treasure hunt to get here in Montebello, California, right? They can't control that because that case wound up on a pallet and the pallet gets all over the place. I'm glad you asked. People are going to tell you stuff and, you know, it ain't true. It just ain't true, all right? Basic treasure hunts are almost in every case. I'd say they're in over half the cases. So there's probably 50,000 of each basic treasure hunt. Super treasure hunts, look, I got my first super treasure hunt out of a case this year. And it's a K case. And so K, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. There's no I. J, K. Okay, so just 10 cases. Well, I do a USA and a worldwide unboxing, right? So that means 20 cases. I got one so far out of 20 cases. That's a real sampling. Um, thanks for asking. No, that's not true. Not one per area. I'm going to do a couple questions on treasure hunts right away, and then I'm moving on. D-A-G, Dumb's Tums, my green twin mill is a treasure hunt. Thanks. No, it's not. Okay. This is, uh, this is uh, very, in my opinion, it's very disrespectful for Mattel to turn around and use the Circle Treasure Hunt logo you know, 2008, 2009, and 2010. They were using the Circle Flame logo before, just on regular cars, right? And then they decided to make it the official treasure hunt symbol, right? So a few years we've been trained, this means it's a treasure hunt. Then they turn around and release a five-pack with cars, including the green mill, twin mill, and they were in a cartoon, Origins of Awesome, right? And they used the logo on the side of the cars in the cartoon, so what do they do? Release the cars in a five-pack. Now people think it's a treasure on five-pack. I think you've been dishonest with your uh, consumers, right? Because I still get questions about this dang thing every week, right? And, and it's not fair to us as collectors and as, you know, mm, you know, pe people who basically represent the brand because we're collectors and we make videos. You know, uh, Mattel's marketing people should have a little more respect for the collectors. If a Circle Flame logo means treasure hunt, that's what it means, all right? Not if, if, this, that, no. Anyways, avant-garde, I accidentally closed another window, got ahead of myself. Sherry, Sherry Digitalis. I love the Tour de Fast and avant-garde castings because I did a comparison between the two in my last weekend show. 
Mm, they're both like futuristic versions of the Citroen, Citroen DS and DS Wagon uh, Tour de France. It's also a play on the cycling event Tour de France, uh, or the name Tour de France and Tour de France, which is why the Olympics model has a bicycle tempos specifically, as well as a bike on top. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few Citroen DS models, or actual cars. Here is Avant-Garde. And if you notice the pointy tip of the model and kind of the headlight placement, it's pretty, uh, the pointy tip is pretty representative. I just grabbed a couple images off of the internet. So I definitely see where the inspiration came from. HW Mustang. Wow, I have never been this early that I get the first comment. Also, early 164 ask race grooves. Now, I, I, I left this because he posted more of a comment and then he happened to mention that he was first. It's not first, right? I guess people have said, okay? Uh, so I left this comment. Now, as far as the 164, that was in regards actually to the Tonka vehicles from Funrise Hasbro. They don't put scale on the models. I'm not sure if they are scale or not. Uh, I highly doubt that they are 164. Car Skids Productions, where did you buy your turntable? I get this question every other month. It's starting to slow down a little bit. Oh, I messed up. Anyways. My rotating display stand, the one that I used for the fat backs in this video with the brown surface, I custom made that brown surface. But that rotating display stand, uh, I bought off of the internet like uh, over five years ago. So I'm not sure where I bought that one. But as far as the one that I use right now, I actually bought it online because it's supposed to be super quiet, uh, uh, super quiet operation. It's actually a lazy Susan that you would put on a table like during a meal, right? Uh, people would put their different foods on the thing and then you spin it around so people can pick the food that they want to eat or snack or whatever. That's really its intention. It's not cheap right? because it's handcrafted, okay? I think mine costed $80, $100 or something because I bought a big one. I'm probably going to buy a smaller one. This one's way too big. I mean, it's... It's huge. I thought I'd get go big first because then I can use them for more stuff. I'm not, I might get a smaller one. But their website was lazy wood. Okay, here we go. Start over. Woodlazysusan.com. Okay. If I remember, I'll put the text right there. Woodlazysusan.com. And it, it takes a while. It's not like you buy it and then you get it in two days. No, it's custom made. They make them when you order them because you pick a color that you want painted and whatnot. And then it takes a little bit of time for it to dry. And if it's humid in that area, it could take weeks. She's over in the south, my recollection. But, uh, yeah, it could take weeks for it to come. So woodlazysusan.com is where I got the rotating display stand I used during my Johnny Lightning, my round two video that I did. The brown one, uh, hard surface, that's where I got it from, all right? Coast Dike asks, always need to slip in a random Ford GT somewhere in the show. Come on! Yeah, I, I love the Ford GT, and it kind of winds up in quite a few, especially weekend shows. Especially because it's been out since it came out late last year, then a recolor. So, it's always, always... Besides, it's your fault this time it wound up in this show because you mentioned it, Coast Dike asks. And the reason why I used it in the size comparison uh, video... Is because I just happen to have it laying around. That's just how it happened. I didn't do it on purpose. Kids Collect 2. Ask Gray Screws. Mark, why does the Super 6 lane cost so much? I've seen them online for $300. Just wondering. Well, people are going to ask for what they want. They could put a suggest. They want $300, right? Now, if they were to put it up as a to, to bid on it, it probably would go for in the neighborhood of $200, right? Look, I bought extras too, right? And it's a fantastic set. They really... They release it during the holiday season, and then it's gone. Uh, I I used to let people know that, hey, Toys R Us has it again. But why should I help Toys R Us sell $100 track sets when they don't work with me? Don't make no sense, so I don't even mention it anymore, right? It's, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Uh, also, I last week I did a video on a Mad Max diecast vehicle. Corey Donaldson, it would be cool if Hot Wheels could make some vehicles from mature films. Uh, you know, Mattel is very careful about what they use, right? Because, you know, they have, they have shareholders and people, people complain that you're selling this to kids and why are you doing this? 
But then again, Red Skull wound up in the Marvel assortment, and he kind of has a history. I'm not sure that people think would think is kid appropriate. But thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out this episode of the Weekend Show. I hope you guys have a great week. And as always, a few links. And again, thanks to those people who support it on Patreon. Have a great week. Bye-bye.